Hey, it's your open source advocate, and every week I bring you new open source, self-hosted software that is absolutely amazing. I hope you'll like, subscribe, and tell your friends about this channel so they can come along on the journey with us. Now let's get started. So as we're going through this section, I just want to say sorry now about the audio. I'm using my phone to record this. I don't have a separate microphone to do that, so it's just the audio on the actual phone itself that I'm using. I'll do my best to adjust it and make it a little bit better, but it should be better once we get to the software side. Okay, I want to talk about a little project that I've been doing. It's really based around what you're looking at here. So I've for a long time been looking for a way to make my own security cameras at home because everything on the market's really pretty expensive for what you get. I was originally trying to get something that I could run off of a battery out of the box and while I could do that, these won't have very good lifespan but these are really inexpensive by comparison to what you buy out on the market and they've got some pretty good capabilities so i want to kind of go through what i've done and, and how i've done it i got a few of these ideas uh, off of different people from uh, different youtube videos on the internet and kind of took all of that and put it together so i bought these fake security cameras and i'm going to kind of show you what this looks like uh, which basically this is it it looks just like a real security camera. And I took these and I modified them. So I'll show you all the parts so that you can see kind of what it looks like once you've taken it apart and what you're doing. And then I basically take a Raspberry Pi Zero and I connect up a camera module to it and uh, run, uh, make a little modification to the case here and there and then put everything back together and run power to it. And now I've got two working uh, security cameras and I'm using open source software, of course, to run on the Raspberry Pi Zeros for the camera. And then I'm using open source software as my actual control software as well. So you can, you can do this a few ways and I'll go through that when I get to the rest of the video. Uh, but first, let me open up this box and I'll kind of show you what these things look like when you take them apart. And then we'll look at all the parts that we need. Okay, here is basically what comes in the box. You get the camera. You get a sticker that you can put up somewhere that tries to inform people that you have CCTVs. Now these are kind of are fake cameras. They have a little battery compartment that you can put in AA batteries and then they have a little LED that I think blinks or stays on, I don't know. Um, and then you do get a little mounting kit. So these things can actually be mounted on the wall. They do have uh, you know some, some degrees of motion so you can actually kind of get them pointed the way you want. And then they've got this little tube that is just meant to look like a cable so that somebody thinks it's actually plugged in. It's just a fake tube that we're gonna discard anyways, and I'll kind of show you what that looks like. So for step one is to take off this little top cover and it just slides back. It, it doesn't click on anything like that. It just slides into place. It's just kind of a little rain cover. And right here on the top, you can see the battery compartment where you would put in some AA batteries, um, which would probably make an LED last a really long time. Uh, you'd have to check it visually because there's obviously nothing inside that would ever tell you that it's out, but uh, there's step one. Uh, step two is going to be to take off the uh, four screws here on the back and this is a really tiny uh, little Phillips head screw if you can see that and then the same thing uh, so you can see this little plastic piece inside and I'll show you what that is here in a second but you see there's four holes here on the on the front as well and those also have the same size tiny little Phillips head screws so we're going to take those out and get the front and the back off and then this little seam here is is really the top half and the bottom half of of the camera just held together by the front and back plates okay i've got the four screws out that literally took less than 30 seconds um, it just doesn't take that long and now this little back piece is just going to pop off and we can see that inside it is very hollow um, that's why this thing makes such a great case for making an actual camera out of um, so i'm just going to set that lid down and I'm going to flip it around and I will take off the front piece and you'll see all the parts that are inside there. Okay, now the, the screws are out of the front. So I'm going to set this down and hopefully not drop it here. And I'm going to pull this off, but you need to know that when you pull it off, it does kind of come apart. So I'm going to pop it off here. But there's screws on the inside and you'll see there's two, there's a, there's a resistor here. You'll see right here, there's a resistor and a wire. And those are hooked up to the LED, which is hooked up to the battery compartment. Um, so there are still some screws on the inside here that we need to take apart. Now, I don't care about this LED. 
So I'm just gonna pull it out. It may be a little bit stuck in there, but you can pop it out of there. And then I'm gonna undo those screws there. Um, so there's three long screws that are kind of holding that plastic part together. And then there'll be some screws underneath as well. Okay, you can see I just slid the, the LED out of the hole. I didn't have to rip the wires off or anything. Um, it just goes in this little hole right there. And then I've got three screws that I need to take out of here and we'll get this thing taken apart a little bit more. Okay, those three screws are out. Now you can see they're a bit longer than the others. And once we've got those out, we can just set that piece down and we can basically pop off this piece. And you see, it's just a bunch of fake LEDs. There's one real LED that goes in that big hole of that big spot right there. And then the little back plane with the lens that looks like a camera lens. Uh, it's just fake, it doesn't do anything. So you've got this little set of bubbles and you can see I've got two more over here. So there's another one for my collection. And I do take off the LEDs because I'm not using them. Uh, I might put them back just because I could get some light potentially if I put a white LED on there. Of course, that'd kind of stand out. Um, but now I've got this nice little piece that I'm gonna use as my frame. And this piece, while it, it, it looks really nice, you could just drill it out. The problem is you're gonna glue the Raspberry Pi camera here and that's a long distance for that camera to try to look and you're gonna lose a lot of your field of view uh, because this thing's not very big, it's not really a lens. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a saw and we're just gonna saw it off right here flat against the plastic. And once we've got this sawed off, uh, we'll be ready to go to the next step. So I've got this saw. I got this thing a long time ago at Home Depot. They're not expensive. It's just a little hacksaw. It's really not any, any big thing, but the nice thing about it is I can get it here really close to this lens and I can cut and then I don't have to worry about trying to keep it in the right place. So it's hollow underneath. You just want to be careful as you're cutting so you don't cut your fingers, of course. And I'll be back in a second when it's cut off. This is the first time this has happened, but this is only the third one I've done. But as I was cutting, this actually kind of snapped. So I don't know if it's glued or if it's molded, but you end up with a little edge even when you cut it. So it's good to have some sandpaper that you can use to kind of smooth this out before you start putting everything together. And it does make a little bit of nasty dust here on the surface. So just be ready to kind of wipe things down and clean up as you go. Okay, I have a lot going on here. So I want to kind of explain what you're looking at. So first top and bottom half of the actual camera assembly. And you can see there's just not a lot here. It's just hollow. This is that cover and I've got all the little screws in there. And then your front lens, just like what I took apart earlier. So there's the one we took apart earlier. This is one of my working ones that I've taken apart. Down here, I've got the back cover and I've actually modified it a little bit by, by drilling out a little bit of space. Um, I just take out this tube. So I'll take the one from earlier that we took apart. And I basically just pull this tube right out in one hand that it's not that easy, but I don't have a tripod, so there we go. So you've got this little space where that tube goes through, and you can see there, there's a little hole there, not, not a real big hole, but you can see back there, my finger moving a little bit. So you take this, you drill it out with a drill bit. Um, you can just kind of cut it out with uh, anything sharp, just be careful, but you just drill that out a bit more so that you can fit um, basically a, a micro USB wire through it. If you want to snip a wire, you know, push it through and then splice it back together, you can do that. But you need some way to get power in through that actual hole that was fake for power. So we're actually going to make it real for power. So once we've got that thing cut, you end up with something like this, where you've got this USB cable running through there. And then you can just plug that into the Pi and the other end into a power brick of some kind. So here... We've actually got the Pi Zero, and I've just got it inside of a little uh, plastic case that you can get from, in, as part of the kit from Canna Kit. It's, it's got a hole for a camera actually here. So if you don't want to use this whole get up, you can just build it like this. But this thing isn't, isn't anywhere near waterproof, so that's kind of a, an issue for me. I uh, want to make outdoor cameras. If you're doing indoor, this, this would be perfectly fine. But I thought, hey, this is still a good holder. On the bottom side of this, there's a, a little slot so I ran the ribbon cable that you need for a Raspberry Pi Zero. And those are this. 
So you need to pay attention when you order a Pi Zero and a camera, you need to make sure that they either include a Pi Zero with the camera, a cable for that, or you need to buy separate cables because uh, the Pi Zero uses a slightly different size uh, connector on the, on the Pi side than the Raspberry Pi 3, 4, 2, 1. Those have a, a wider space for it to connect and this one is narrower so you wanna have the right kind of ribbon cable. So I've got the ribbon cable running and then I've got the camera module and it's just you're looking at the back of it and I've got it glued in to that little piece that we cut the front off of a while ago so the camera just sits there so that's why we basically cut that off so that we could glue a camera on there so I've got a, a separate camera module here that, that you can kind of see what it looks like it's really just a board with a camera on it um, the ribbon cable plugs into the back of it and the other end of that cable, of course, goes into your Pi Zero or your Raspberry Pi, depending on how you build this thing. This is kind of how it breaks down. Now, my other camera that's right here, I don't have the little Raspberry Pi case. I just stuck the Pi Zero in there and I have the camera attached with the ribbon cable and it's still glued to glued everything. The only difference is there's no case. Um, everything else is exactly the same and it, it, it works pretty well. So now that you've kind of seen the breakdown of how it, it's all taken apart, I'll, I'll kind of show you how I put it together. All right, so we're going to put all this stuff back together. Okay, now I've got the plug in place. It's plugged in. I can take this other half and I can put it over the top here. I can put this all together. I can even push up the back piece up my cord here and get it in place and now really everything's together other than putting the screws in so I can just hold this with my hand and get my screws ready to tighten up and then everything's back together it's all back together this is what it looks like when it's done so you just notice that we took out all of the extra bubbly looking baloney uh, from it so we got the LED out of the way we got all these things out of the middle of it, which I think would just block the camera view more. So you can put this back in if you really want to. It probably won't hurt anything, but there's nothing to go through the center to keep it centered together. You just have to use the screws to get it that way. And I just left it out because what's the point of putting it back? I'm just going to use this for an outdoor camera. Now, um, again, there is a nice little hole down here that we could put an LED through, but I believe the LED that comes with it is red, and I would want one that is white so that I could light up something in the in the nighttime and actually see something with a camera. These are not infrared cameras. You can get infrared cameras if you want to use those. You just need to make sure that if there is a light built onto the camera board that helps with that, you don't cover that up with this uh, faceplate that we glued it to. All right, now let's move over to the software side, and uh, we'll see how everything goes. And then finally, I've got samples of what's going on with Motion iOS. So this is the camera that I just took apart and put back together for you. Um, so you can kind of see what's happening here and you can see the motion that's going on just barely outside the window. There's not a lot of wind today, so it's hard to tell that it's not a static image. Uh, but if we, if we zoom it up a little bit, um, you can kind of see the, the leaves moving on the trees here now. I'm using this with Motion iOS, but I'm also streaming this to Shinobi, so it looks a little more broken up than normal. Um, if you just use, use Motion iOS on its own, you get a very smooth stream, and, and it's really nice. So I'm going to make this back down to normal size there. 